Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Let's Talk Purity podcast with Brittany and Richard Delamora. Thanks so much for being here. Our podcast is brought to you by edify.app. Also, thank you so much for sharing all about our podcast on your social media platforms. Also, for those of you who aren't aware, we have moved our podcast to Wednesdays. It's no longer on Mondays, so make sure that you get your midweek pick-me-up. Mm. And if you haven't yet... A Call to Purity, our new book, Living a Lifestyle of Purity. We're so grateful as we read through all of the amazing reviews that yeah. you've written on this book. And Come we on. ask that um, if you've checked out our book, if you've bought our book, would you please go over to Amazon and write us a review? It'll really help us to get the message across. Um, and yeah, just keep sharing on your social media platforms. You guys are really helping us out. So if this podcast is blessing you, if our book, A Call to Purity, is blessing you, please keep sharing. Mm. Um, today we're going to talk to you about something so exciting because this has been so heavy on my heart and like it fires my spirit up. And what we're talking about today is how to get unstuck Mm. because see so many people in life, they are stuck in life yet they do nothing to get out of it. For me, for example, I was in the porn industry for seven years of my life and I felt stuck in that business. I believed every lie that comes around like, you know, who's ever going to hire you? You're never going to find a job. You know, you're never going to get married or have a family because nobody's going to accept you for your past. Like all of these lies that I believed, they kept me stuck. And so what happens is because we believe the lies of the devil, we end up going around the same mountain over and Mm. over and over again, and nothing changes in our life. It reminds me of the children of Israel Mm. where it took them 40 years to get to the promised land and it was only supposed to be an 11 day journey. Mm. Like that irritates me. When I, when I read that verse in in the scriptures, it irritates my spirit because Mm. then I think about how many of God's people are circling around, going around the same mountain and it is taking them years and years and years to do what God has called them to do or to become the person that God sees them as, right? Because God sees us as pure. He sees us as his children, but Not all of us are living pure lifestyles. Not all of us are acting Mm. like children of God. You know, we're full of gossip, envy. We sleep around. We go from bad relationship to bad relationship. Um, And that's not God's design for us. Mm. And so it, it really irks my spirit because it's like, Maybe you could have been married to that amazing man of God by now, or maybe you could have been off those drugs by now. You know, what should have only been an 11 journey a day journey for you has been taking you like 40 years. Yeah. So today is just, it's like, I just want to help people get unstuck today. Mm. If you are struggling and you feel like I just, my life is just mundane, it's not full of joy, you know, my my relationship with God is not overflowing. You know, I'm miserable. I'm depressed. Like, I want to help you get, we want to help you get mm-hmm. unstuck today. Right, love? Absolutely. And I love what you're saying, babe, because this is such an incredible conversation, especially if you're listening with a nice cup of coffee or just whatever you're doing. Because our goal and our hopes is for you not to stay stuck, for you not to stay stagnant, for you not to settle. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why you'll ever settle is because really you stopped working the word that God has given you. Mm. I know you talked about the children of Israel, but as you were speaking, a person came up to my mind. It's the man who was um, laying by the side of the pool. I think yeah, of Bethesda for 38 yes, years, right? That's a good word. And it's so funny because God, he asked him, like, do you want to be made well? Okay, so he asked him the question. God gave him the word, and now he had to do something with the word. Mm. My problem, babe, I have with a lot of people is they pray for this. God, could you please give me a word? Give me a word to get out of my situation. Give me a word. Mm -hmm. And I really don't think the struggle is if God can give you a word. The real struggle is, is when God gives you a word, could you act on the word that God has given you? Because sometimes when it comes to, you know, so many of our lives, we want God to do everything. You not only want, you know, to God to help you out, but you want God to mend the relationship. You want God to give you the job. You want God to do this. But what I realized about God is that God will give you the seeds, 
but you got to take your shovel and plant it and you got to get us the tree we got to build the table absolutely we got to get we got to work it and we have to move Mm -hmm. the seed in the words that he has given us and i really believe if we want to move forward if we want to get unstuck then we need to tell ourselves, you know what? Enough is enough. Yes. Because until you hate the place that you're at, yep. you're never going to move forward. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be okay with being in this, you know, relationship that you don't like, this job that you complain about every single day, you know, just how your life has been. It's all because you don't want to do anything about it. Yeah, you, know? you got to unleash that fighter within you. And I love what you said. That's It's so key that you have to hate so badly. You have to hate where you are. Yeah that you're willing to do whatever it is to yeah. change it, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's how I was able to get off drugs and get out of the porn industry. Yeah. Um, obviously, I couldn't have done anything without God. It's all his grace and all his presence. Mm-hmm. However, I got to this place where I said, God, it is your way or the highway yeah. because my way has led me to a place where I may not live tomorrow because I hate myself yeah. so much. I hate my life so much. I'm so depressed. I'm so addicted to drugs that God, if I don't start following your word, mm. then I'm probably going, no, not probably. I am going to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. And I hated that place of misery. I hated that place of brokenness. I hated dating guys that could never love me or value me or see me the way that God did because I didn't even see myself the way that God saw me right and mm-hmm. so I I learned I, because I hated the misery so much it's like I would just open up the pages of the Bible yeah. and I would start reading his word and whatever his word said I would do absolutely and that's what we have to do like we have to spend time in the word of God we have to spend time in his presence we have to spend time fasting because some things don't break off of your life but through prayer and fasting so if you are like well I read the Bible and I do all these things but you're not having an encounter with God maybe it's time for you to fast like yeah, you know. yeah, that's really good. And what I love about your journey is one thing that you've done really well, babe, which I commend you of, is um, you've learned to surrender. I think a lot of us, we want to do things the way we want to do things. Yeah. It's either my way, God, or the highway. But that's because you, know, you don't hate where you're at enough. Exactly, right? So mm-hmm. we don't want to surrender. I'll never forget this one time, too, growing up. Um, I had braces, y'all, for about three or four years, and I was sick and tired of my braces in mm-hmm. high school year. And... I remember people would ask me, when are you going to get your braces off? Well, funny thing is, is um, I go and I have my appointment. I go to um, the dental office and I ask them, like, when can I get my braces off? And I'm like, I had these braces on for years. He goes, Richard, these braces all could come off in the next month or two. But there's one thing that you're not doing that I keep telling you to do every single time you come in. I said, what's that? He goes, you have to wear your rubber bands. And I'm like yeah but they hurt me and i I don't like wearing them he goes until you surrender to this process you're going to keep um having these uh braces on until you surrender some of us here today we're asking god god when are you going to move in my life god when are you going to change my life or change things around my life and i'm wondering if god is like rephrasing and asking us this question like Hey, when are you going to surrender to the process so Mm -hmm. I could change and move in your life? You see, oftentimes we want change, but we don't want to surrender. And I believe, babe, that where there is great change, there is even a greater uh, place of surrenderance in our lives. So I think we need to learn to surrender. But also, we know what we need to learn to do. We need to make sure that we have the right circle of people around us. Yeah, that's good too. Because iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Mm -hmm. What I love about our lives, it's funny, we were talking about this earlier today in the car after church. We, we always want to make sure that we have people sharpening us. And we like it when our friends are killing it because in our my, lives, we're like, yo, we need to kill it too. Let's go. Yeah, it fires but us up. It fires us up. It's not, it doesn't get us to a place of jealousy. It gets us to a place of, dude, let's go out there. Let's work God's kingdom. Friends, some of you, your life would be changing by now if you would learn to change your inner circle. Yes. You have some people in your life who they don't have a dream for their life. They don't have a vision. All they want to do is go to the club and all they want to do is go and drink and all they want to do is party and have fun or they just stop. They, they, they settle. They don't, they're no longer asking God for big prayers anymore. You know, They might be the person with you at church, but even when they're at church, they're already checked out. Yeah. Friends, Find some friends who will sharpen you, Mm -hmm. who will get you back up again, who will pick you up and help you to move forward. If you want to get unstuck, 
be around people who are unstuck to help. Like I literally help you get unstuck so you can move forward. And you have to recognize that when you're in a place of pain, a place of brokenness or a place of dysfunction, you have to remind yourself that mm. that place is actually not normal. Yep. See, so many of oh, us, that's so good. we end up adapting to our dysfunction so and good. we take that on as like, this is our new normal, mm. right? I've talked about my uh, garden before and about how the broccoli plants were getting attacked with caterpillars and you know um, how the Lord spoke to me that just because it's getting attacked doesn't make it not, it's no, it's not like, an orange tree all of a sudden it's still a broccoli plant right and so the reality is is like you may be getting attacked with lust with pornography you might get be getting attacked with bad relationships with depression maybe you battle with suicidal thoughts like i once did but that doesn't mean that's who you are and therefore you should not uh, build a house there. You should you should not settle there. You need to remind yourself mm. that that place is not normal and that the Lord actually does have a better life for you. Mm. And we need to persevere. We have to stop adapting to God, the dysfunction. So, that, that is not normal. Mm. And that's why so many people grow comfortable in life because there was once a time when all of you listening were so full of joy, you were so full of faith, you believed that yeah. anything was possible. Maybe you haven't felt like that since you were two years old because maybe you've been taken advantage of. Maybe mm. you had an abusive parent. Um, maybe, you know, uh, somebody in high school broke your heart. Like mm. whatever it may be, like somebody has crushed your heart. And so you no longer believe like you once did. But I just believe today that Jesus wants to take you back to a place where you have childlike faith, yes, where on. you believe believe for miracles Come where on. you believe for god's Let's greatness go. where you believe that god is the god who can open doors that no man can shut Preach where it. he can renew your strength Preach where it. he can restore your Come purity on. your innocence your joy see god wants to return to you the joy of your salvation because some of you you forgot what it was like to be in love with jesus mm. you forgot what it was like to truly love people because you've been hurt by them so much that when somebody gets close to you you run yeah. and god wants wants you to run not away from people but even he he wants you to not only he doesn't want you to just run away from people he wants you to run to people yeah. he wants you to embrace people and love even the unlovable and i just mm-hmm. believe that you know today god is doing something new in your life and so i want to challenge you and i know my husband's in agreement we want to challenge you spend the next 30 days mm-hmm reading the word of God, spend the next 30 days playing worship music, get rid of all the garbage, the junk music. Mm -hmm. You don't even need that in your life. I want to take you on a fast where you are just fasting like secular music, where you're reading the Bible, you're worshiping, and you are authentically praying. And I guarantee you, we are going to hear testimonies. We're going to get emails. Hello at lovealwaysministries.com. Send us an email at the end of 30 days with your praise reports, because I believe that God is going to do something great where you're no longer going to be stuck. God is going to lift you up out of that place and he is going to transform you Mm. and you are going to be a brand new person. You are going to be exactly who God sees you and you're going to be exactly who he calls you to be. I'm excited for that. Absolutely. And I want to do one more challenge because it just go. came to my head i challenge you guys to stop making excuses yeah and stop, stop speaking complaining come words come on fast because the words, reason yeah. why you're stuck is because your words are creating your environment so good our our words have the power to produce life or death speak life through this time say god i'm going to you know i'm going to move forward i'm yes. going to you know i'm going to better my marriage i'm going to get out of this situation keep speaking life i'm telling you if you want to change your world all you have to do is change your, change your words. words that's all you have to do and friends my wife and i just encourage you have fun with this do it with a step-by-step process. You know, the reason why I say this, babe, because oftentimes even the stuff we're saying, right? Oh, you got to surrender. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to, it could be overwhelming. They could feel like, oh, that's too much for me. I don't know what I can do. I don't even know what I'm doing in my life. Hey, take it a step at a time. My wife and I did not get where we are at today instantaneously. I feel like all you have to do is seek God's presence. That's it. When you seek his presence, Psalm 37, 4, which is one of my most favorite scriptures, it says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So too often we think like that we have to do things in our own strength, but it's not in your own strength. If you just seek God 
on a daily basis, he begins to change your heart's desires. Step where it's step, like yep. where I started coming to God as a drug addict. And then all of a sudden, I didn't want to do drugs mm. anymore. I didn't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. Mm. I didn't want to do any of that junk anymore. Like it wasn't. It, I, yeah. Our daughter, she'll always, if we tell her something, she goes, don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to anymore. You know, and, and that was because God got a hold of my heart. And he began to change things around. And as you seek God daily and you make a pact to start seeking him every day for the next 30 days and fast those fast those words of complaint and gossip, God is going to do something brand new in your life. Friends, we love you so much. Thank you so much for tuning into the Let's Talk Purity podcast with Brittany and Richard Delamora brought to you by Edify.app. We love you guys so much and we will see you next week. Because of a virus that attacked and hurt the world, we put much emphasis on washing our hands. But I'm here to tell you that there is a spiritual virus and it is attacking marriages, families, and young adults. And it's called impurities. In 2020, the world asked us to wash our hands, but God is also calling us to have clean hearts. The word purity means freedom from contamination. And in this book, we address things that contaminate our heart, such as lust, unforgiveness, bitterness, insecurities, idolatry, pornography, amongst other contaminations, and how to get free from them. And that's exactly why we wrote this book, A Call to Purity, because God is calling us to be pure. You see, when you walk in purity, you walk in freedom. And friends, this book, It's just not a book. It's a mandate from God. And God is calling us to rise up and walk in purity.